Marima notebooks are quite different from Jupyter notebooks, and the main core thing that makes them different is this notion of reactivity. So let's give a quick demo of this. I have a notebook in front of me here that's a Marima notebook, and it has a couple of cells. I'm declaring variable A here, I'm declaring a variable B here, and here I'm adding two variables together. Now what you can notice, if I were to maybe change a cell over here and then run it, that then automatically the cell below over here updates. Now the reason behind this is because of reactivity. If I were to give all of these cells a name, let's say, so I've got A through D, then I could take all of these cells and I can try to come up with a graph that shows how they're maybe connected. So I've got the cell D at the end over here that uses two variables, and those variables come from cells B and C. There's also the cell A over here that doesn't have any dependence whatsoever, but you could look at this and say, hey, this is the dependency graph of this notebook. And there's a chain here. Whenever cell B updates, then cell D also needs to update. And likewise, if cell C updates, then cell D also has to update. Small little caveat on that one though, it doesn't always have to automatically update. There are settings such as lazy mode that give you more manual control over when things actually update later down a chain. But the main thing that's important for now at least is that notion of a graph. This reactive nature actually allows for a couple of very interesting consequences that are very unlike the behavior you might see in Jupiter. For example, because there's this step that determines how these nodes are related, I don't really care about the order of the cells anymore. So that means that all of my import statements, well, I can just drag them down. That's totally fine. Whenever a cell is updated, we first check the DAG, so to say, and the order, before we determine how things have to update. Another interesting consequence is that I can very easily just swap out some variable with a UI element. So I could change this B into a slider, so to say. It starts somewhere, it ends somewhere, it has a step. So I made a small change. There's a slider over here, and I can slide it to change the value, and that value will be assigned to variable B. And kind of just naturally, I can uh, slide around, and I can see this cell over here uh, update natively. And this is also a core strength. Because we have reactivity, it is quite natural to just associate the value of a variable with a UI element, and you would get all these updates for free. However, there's one thing that people often find very unintuitive, and that is the fact that you cannot reassign a value. So I cannot do this, for example. I cannot have one cell that says A is equal to 10 and have another cell below over here say that A is equal to 5. The reason for this is because now Marimo doesn't know which cell actually contains the ground truth. Both of these two cells should cause a change in this cell over here that has the addition, and this is just going to really confuse Marimo. So if I were to run that cell, you will notice that we see an error because variable A was already defined elsewhere. Similarly though, you also can't do stuff like this. Redefining a variable has the exact same problem. And this is true for all sorts of variables, by the way, not just integers or floats, but lists in Python as well. Now there are these advanced use cases where you might still want to be able to update some state, and Marimo comes with a state object for that. But in general, if you want to get the most out of Marimo, it is super helpful to write your code in a functional style, especially if you're doing data work. There's a lot of ways to do this, by the way, and I'm going to go in depth in that in upcoming videos. But for this particular use case, there's also another remedy uh, that I do want to highlight. Because in this particular case, Marimo doesn't know which one of these two cells actually contains the leading ground truth. But I could still merge the same logic by just writing this code in this cell above over here. That would totally work. Even though I am technically updating a variable over here, it's fine because there's still one and only one cell that has this variable A as an output. So as far as Marimo is concerned, this one cell is still pointing to that cell, just like this one is still pointing to the same output cell, but there's no confusion as far as, oh, there are multiple cells that declare a variable A or uh, adapt it. So this is one way that you could actually go about changing a variable, but just make sure it's all in the same cell.